We have breaking news right now, tracking a fugitive. NBC 15 News has obtained exclusive video showing Mobile Police just feet away from Marco Perez two days before police say he murdered Officer Sean Tudor. NBC 15 News has been digging through court records. We have been knocking on doors, pounding the pavement, finding out just how Perez escaped justice until that finally final deadly confrontation with Officer Tudor. It appears many people in the neighborhoods that he was in knew who he was and knew that uh, he was wanted by police. They have linked him to several other uh, crimes, burglaries, and car break-ins and stealing of cars. And this video you're looking at actually shows Perez who was visiting a friend's house in Westmobile. This was January 17th in the afternoon. He's right there in that red, red hoodie. He was there for about 20 minutes. Police showed up moments later, just missing him. We will have the very latest on this exclusive NBC 15 video for you coming up on NBC 15 News at 5. Coming up next on NBC 15 News, new video shows Mobile Police just feet away from Marco Perez, the man who police say killed one of their own. It's video you'll only see on NBC 15. Also at 5, why a child rape charge filed against a middle-aged Mobile man is suddenly being tossed out. NBC 15 News at 5 is next. Well, tonight, tracking a fugitive, exclusive new video shows Mobile Police just feet away from Marco Perez, two days before police say he murdered Officer Sean Tudor. NBC 15 News has been digging through court records, knocking on doors and pounding the pavement, finding out how Perez escaped justice until the final deadly confrontation with our fallen hero. Now here's what we have uncovered. Marco Perez spent much of his time in West Mobile neighborhoods he was familiar with in the days leading up to the deadly shooting. Mobile police have linked him to at least three stolen cars and one home burglary all during January. He was charged with all of those crimes today. That, in addition to the charge of capital murder, Perez faces for Officer Tudor's murder on January 20th. Today we tracked down surveillance video showing how Perez dodged police just days before that. On the afternoon of January 17th, you can see Perez in that red hoodie here visiting with a teenage friend at a home in Westmobile. A video shows he is in that friend's house for about 20 minutes. Perez leaves the home and not long after, gets into a small sedan. Police were tracking Perez's cell phone location and arrived in that neighborhood less than an hour later, interviewing people there as they closed in on the fugitive. They didn't find Perez that day. Just hours after this video was recorded in the early morning hours of January 18th, police say Perez stole a pickup from a home a few streets away. But Marco Perez wasn't done with his old stopping ground. He returned to the Westmobile home he visited the day before. This time, he broke in. NBC 15's Nicole Fierro spoke with the victims of that burglary about that close call and shows us how Perez got away again, Nicole. Surveillance video captures about two hours on the morning of Friday the 18th. In these two hours, we see police just feet away from Marco Perez, so close to catching the man they say killed their own officer, Sean Tudor, just two days later. Surveillance video captures Marco Perez entering and leaving Cynthia Smith's house in about a two hour period Friday, January 18th. Two hours, Smith had no idea until she watched these videos later. So for two hours, this kid was in my house. Two hours, I'm getting ready for work. And this kid is in my house. Surveillance first captures Perez at 8.40 a.m. He's there in the same red hoodie he was wearing the day before walking past Smith's car into her carport. Video doesn't show how he got inside. Smith thinks there was an unlocked door. She never heard a thing. Neither did her two sons who were at home at the time. The family dog never barked either. We can't see inside, but Smith's teenage son Aiden says Perez crept into his room while he was sleeping. He woke up to find his friend standing over his bed. He said, you know, when you get that creepy feeling that someone's, you know, staring at you while you're sleeping, that's what he felt. And he woke up and Marco was here. He was like, dude, you got to leave. You know, get out of my house. And he's rolled over and went back to sleep. We're like, why didn't you make sure he left? He's like, because I told him to leave. Aiden went back to sleep because he was suspended from school. His mom went to work, taking her youngest son with her. Around 1045, surveillance footage shows three mobile police officers searching for Perez outside of Smith's house. Every door, 
gate and entrance. Once again, they were tracking his cell phone and activity on social media. Since Aiden was sleeping and Smith had left for work, no one was there to answer the door. The officers had no idea they were just feet away from the man who would later allegedly murder one of their own. I wish they would have known that he was here inside, break down the doors, come get him, whatever it took. You know, maybe that, you know, it took place on Sunday, maybe that would have never happened. You see the officers walk around the home for about five minutes. 1049, the three officers start walking away to their cars. A couple minutes later, you see their cars circle the cul-de-sac and leave right around the time Smith's son woke up again. You know, and then you wake up a little while later, Mark is still here. So he's like, dude, seriously, you need to turn yourself in, get out of my house, but you've got to leave. you got to go. And so at that point in time, that's when Mark had left. Two minutes after the police cars drive away, you see Marco in red leaving and hopping a fence. It's police just, are right out there. Um, I know. It's, it, it's like, it was, it was like, just like they were, you know, one just little inch ahead. Smith only found out Perez was in her home that day when police contacted her hours later. Watching this video over and over again as her family works with detectives, as she showed it to us, Smith can't help but get emotional thinking about what could have happened had she known Perez was there. Tonight at 6, we tap into those emotions. Kim and Greg? Nicole, thank you. It was about 48 hours after Perez left that home that Officer Sean Tudor found him. Officer Tudor got a tip that Perez was hiding out at the Peach Place Inn in West Mobile. The officer went to check it out, even though he was off duty on Sunday, January 20th. Mobile police say Tudor knew Perez from a previous encounter. They say just after the officer arrived at the inn, Perez saw him and attacked. Officer Tudor was shot to death as the two struggled. Police say Perez had his own gun. It was a stolen gun and that Officer Tudor never got off a shot. Other responding officers showed up and immediately arrested the alleged killer. Uh, the death of Officer Tudor is sparking action statewide. Today, three of Alabama's U.S. attorneys met in Tuscaloosa to discuss violence against law enforcement officers. The week before Officer Tudor was gunned down, two Birmingham police officers were shot. One of them died. And just 11 months ago, Mobile Officer Justin Biller was shot and killed in the line of duty. Well, today, the Alabama U.S. attorney for the Southern District says enough is enough. We've got to get the word out. You do not shoot a cop. And if you do, we're going to bring the full power of the government and law enforcement down on you. There is a difference uh, in how we treat law enforcement folks and particularly people who are standing between us and the people who would do us harm. We back the blue. Several states have measures on the books that make it a hate crime to attack or kill a police officer. Alabama is not one of them. NBC 15 News was first to tell you about this tragic shooting with a breaking news text alert just minutes after shots rang out. For all of our coverage on this story, as well as a closer look at all this new video you'll only see on NBC 15, visit our website, mynbc15.com. We're covering breaking news tonight. Child rape charges filed against a middle-aged mobile man are being dropped. NBC 15 was first to tell you 47-year-old Timothy Robinson was arrested back in December for raping a toddler in 1989.